Welcome to Butterflies of the Biosphere. Today I have with me Paul Gorringe, Countryside Ranger for Brighton Hove City Parks and also Species Champion for the Silverwash Fertillery. Paul, welcome. Thank you, Dan. Welcome to Stanmer. Oh, thanks very much. Um, it's, it's a great place, isn't it? So why have you brought me here in particular? Um, well, this is the, it's not particularly renowned for, for butterflies, Stanmer. It's a, it's, a, it's a massive, great big park, mainly a park estate. Um, but the outer rim of the Stanmer estate itself has this, um, some great quality woodlands, probably the best woodland we've got in the Brighton area. Uh, but also this wonderful bank of dreams behind us here, um, which is full of marjoram and attracts loads of different butterflies as well as moths and hoverflies and, and lots of other invertebrates. So it's a really, really important nectar source for, for local, local, local insects. And you have brought me here for something specific then, haven't you? That's right, yes. Um, um, quite uncharacteristically for the species, I found a silver-washed fertility um, up here. Uh, not so much uncharacter uncharacteristically, but we didn't know at the time the, the dist distribution of the silver wash to cross Brighton and Hove and yeah. it was still in doubt as to whether um, it was actually present in the city. So this was the first experience I had of that butterfly um, was on this bank just behind us here. Yeah and it's interesting because it goes back to 2006 when we were doing our first poster of butterflies of Brighton and Hove and we were considering whether or not we should include uh, the silver wash artillery and it wasn't until we came across a few records one i think was from prue grinley uh, another from jamie burson and then the third from yourself we actually began to realize hey actually there's a story here absolutely yeah i mean it's really exciting because since then we've we've actually come across numerous individuals spread right across the stammer estate and and further down into as you say with jamie with in, into hollandbury woods yeah and it's also intriguing because we've never really found a, a colony that you can reliably go back to every single year and know you're going to see it there mm. yeah that's right yeah i mean um I think that the, I think personally, from what I've seen the last couple of years, the butterfly is starting to expand in the area. Um, there are sometimes some, some unexplained reasons for, for, for huge expansions, particularly of this species. But also, we're starting to manage the woodlands better again after a long period of neglect. Uh, coppicing obviously died out on a large scale a, a long time ago now. So we have reintroduced coppicing to several parts of the Stamara woods. Um, and that seems to be having an effect. And, and uh, I seem to have found an area where there are more, disproportionately, more silver wash, which is over the back on this far woodland over the back there on the uh, High Park Farm Estate part of Stanmer. What was it like that first time? I mean, how did you feel when you saw that silver wash for Tillon? I was elated. It was, it was a wonderful sight. It's not something that I've seen before in the city um, or anywhere else, actually. At that, that point, I was relatively new to butterflying even in 2010. It's only quite, been quite a recent thing for me. So. I was walking along here, minding my own business, along this beautiful bank of marjoram and, and scabious here, just taking a few snaps, and all of a sudden this, this huge great thing uh, glided over my head, and uh, I thought immediately knew that there was something that wouldn't, hadn't been recorded here before, uh, by me anyway, so I, I, I chased it up the path, and then it eventually settled on a piece of marjoram, and, uh, and identified it as a silver wash fertility, yeah. Um, significantly bigger than a, than a dark green fertility, with the different undersides, it was pretty, it was pretty, uh, pretty simple for me to identify it, to be honest. Yeah, despite, as I say, being relatively new. Yeah. So if you if you had to put an X on the map, where would you say the best place to go to, to hopefully see a silver wash? Well, despite this little area here being my virgin spot for seeing a silver wash, I'd say the best area would be the High Park Farm ride um, footpath up the back of Stanmer. You can see in the distance up there, the big uh, part of the big, more established woodland at the back of Stanmer. Well, let's go there then. Let's. So Paul, um, very hot now, isn't it? Oh, it's a bit sweltery, yeah. A and bit hot and sticky, Dan. Yeah, and where are we now? We are in the High Park area of Stam the Stammer Park Estate, uh, which is up the back of Stammer. Uh, and this is where the butterfly was seen by me in good numbers a couple of years ago, over two or three different sessions that I came up here. Yeah. Um, and I first saw it on the, on the woodland ride, just a few metres inside here. And then it darted off to the right, and I chased it through the, over the wall, over the fence, and then was legging it up and down this this uh, this, this this flower the field margin here with lots of lots of lots of uh, thistle, some bramble, some good nectar habitat for the butterfly. Um, and as I say, just chasing it up and down, got some good photos. Um, and that, that and, and I've been up two or three times since then. And it was um, and, and I, I saw one every time for those two or three yeah. trips. But and you saw them at Whitehawk as well, didn't you? Yes, indeed. Yeah, with Whitehawk Hill on the, a small woodland on the southwest side of Whitehawk Hill and we were working with a bunch of volunteers and it just came straight through the woods, never seen anything that big before down there, 
volunteers were, were wowed by it. I got up, we got up close, got some nice shots, took, you know, sort of stood around in a scallop and sh showed everyone the butterfly and it was another, another male. I only seem to have seen males so far, right. yeah. uh, but the females generally are gem uh, a bit more elusive before they start uh, laying eggs. So tell me a bit about that egg laying behaviour. Well, they're quite unique in the British Isles as, um, as one of the only butterflies, or maybe the only butterfly, that lays its eggs on trees, largely. I mean, sometimes you'll find it on, on brash um, down on the, on, on the ground, but, up, but above the ground. Um, but it generally will lay eggs um, on not specific species, but it likes more rough yeah. um, uh, bark. Uh, and it's, it will find cracks in the bark and lay eggs singly but up to six metres up into the canopy and sometimes actually on branches rather than the actual trunk itself, so but mainly there? two metres, three metres up. Um, and it will basically, it will, um, when the egg hatches, two, two weeks or so after it's laid, it will then go straight into hibernation yeah. through the whole winter yeah. and then re-emerge as a caterpillar in um, well, May, June time. Which makes it really, really interesting to compare with the dark green fertility, which of course does pretty much the same thing except it's on the ground. That's right. Yeah. So when you've got a lot of rain, one is more vulnerable than the other. Mm. Well, Paul, we haven't seen any silver wash artillery today, but I, I can't believe you've come clean. Well, I, I've seen a, I've seen a guy today who did see them a couple of days ago, uh, and this is what he had to say. Well, I'm with uh, Paolo Operandi here now, and Paolo uh, is the most recent observer of the Silver Wash Artillery in Brighton and Hove. Uh, welcome, uh, Paolo. Uh, Thank you, Dan. And it was here, wasn't it? You saw it. It was, yeah. We are on the corner of uh, Sussex University in Stamina Park. Um, yeah, and um, the Silver Wash Artillery came down from this ash um, and came across this area here. Uh, and the lovely swoop swooping motion was probably here for about 10 minutes before disappearing over this um, birch. Do you think it was a male or female? I think it was a male. Right, yeah. I think that would make yeah. a lot of sense, wouldn't it? Uh, looking for females on the uh, very edge of their uh, territory. The other thing which I think is quite interesting is that, that, that I really didn't anticipate you'd bring me here because this is yet another site on the boundary of Stanmer Park that we have yet not had a record for, for the Silverwash Artillery. So they're all the way around this, this whole park. It's quite an amazing thing. Actually, uh, things keep catching my eye here. and we've, We're covered, the whole of this bramble is covered with more commas than I've ever seen. I keep thinking of Silverwash Artillery. It's a really nice site, isn't it? It is, it's beautiful. Uh, there's about 10 here I've seen at one time and they were um, all coming up and attacking the Silverwash Artillery when I saw it and it made me think of a bird of prey, yeah. like a buzzard. The crows mobbing a buzzard. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, in the end, it, it obviously uh, didn't like it and disappeared. So this is the first time you've seen them here? Did we establish that? It was it's the second time. So uh, in 2013, I came up here and I could regularly see them for a couple of days, maybe three days. Right. And there was more than one on, that, on those occasions. Oh, that's fabulous. Mm. Well, Paolo, it's been really nice meeting you. Yeah, well, thank you, Dan, and you. Well, Paul, it's been a great day. It's very warm. There's quite a few butterflies we've seen around, but mm. we've got this incredible cereal uh, field behind us, which is not much good for butterflies. What about management for silver washed? Um, it's pretty simple, to be honest, Dan. There's loads of ways that you can tweak um, sort of preferences for this butterfly, but the, 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 bit, the main thing really would be to open up the, the woodland paths and rides just by cutting into the verges, two, three, four metres. By that you mean removing trees? Removing trees, removing some of the scrub and opening it out for ground flora, particularly dog violets, which is there. Their, their food plants. And that's fantastic to hear because a lot of people just don't understand why you need to cut down a tree for nature conservation, do they? It's a, it's a real curveball for lots of people. Mm. It, it's a tricky one because obviously a lot of people, that it's, uh, they don't really see the logic in it. No, and how are you doing for volunteers? Um, really well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, in other areas of the city, we've, 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 we've got full complements. It's, it's brilliant. We have groups of 15 out, um, which we need to now pull the resources up into Stammer. So and actually start managing for woodland butterflies, which we're not used to doing so much because uh, we don't have much of it. So you need more volunteers here? Definitely, more volunteers up in the Stammer Estate, and I'd be happy to lead um, a new project up here. We did do some work at the end of the 2013 season when they were spotted up here, and we widened up some of the paths, yeah. um, but there's certainly more we can do, and there's two or three miles of paths around the Stammer area that, that could do with some work. Okay. So, if you want to see the Silver Wash Artillery, uh, perhaps you need to get out here and help Paul Gorringe with all of his friends to uh, widen up these paths and make the habitat just right. 
Uh, we're very keen to hear about any uh, of your sightings, either on the Butterflies of the Biosphere Facebook page or on the Butterfly Conservation Sussex Branch Sightings page. Paul, it's been a real delight today. Likewise, Dan. I've really enjoyed myself. Good, good. And we've got a bit of a tan and a boot. Brilliant.